Hi guys, right to the point, I want to talk about ways to learn Italian. First of all, what people nowadays use the most, yeah, I guess apps or websites, so I tried to use some of those, like Babel or Duolingo, Duolingo, I don't know how you pronounce that, but anyway, pretending I wanted to learn Italian. If you use that, tell me what impression do you have, but in my opinion, it doesn't really explain you why something is that way especially in the beginning it's just like this 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 okay and sometimes it tests you i don't know maybe i got that wrong i need to do something before telling i just want to learn italian and blah blah, blah. but it asked me things that i didn't learn previously on that website like it started as you can see already like come va ciao blah blah, blah. i guess you have to start anyway from some point so there's not really much you can do about that, but I didn't really like that. On the other side though, I prefer Duolingo to Babel because Duolingo, when you, when you type something wrong, it tells you why and you can discuss that, right? If I'm not wrong. There should be a walkthrough Duolingo, like maybe I should do that so that you know why you're putting that. I see that with my students too. Like they say, oh, see, see, yes, I've done that on Duolingo, so I know that. But then when you ask them, to make a phrase themselves, they're like, um, what, what should I put next? Article? Or like, it's good to practice, but you also need rules. Better than nothing, of course, but I wouldn't rely on those alone. Also, what I've been using too for Japanese, for example, and I found that there is also the Italian course, is Memrise. It's really convenient if you're using that on your smartphone, because you can use that everywhere. For example, I used that on my way to university so I could like learn something. It doesn't take you too much time, too much energy, but that's also the bad point because it doesn't really test you. Like once you basically get it right four times, and of course you do because you just studied that, then it gives that as learned. And maybe that's not it. So yeah. To start, it's a really good start, because the ones that you use in the beginning, and I'm talking about words and grammar, you will always see them, so you will remember them. Another one that I like is high native. Maybe not for beginners, but when you have a doubt, like how to say that or that, a native speaker will answer. You don't get the standard answer, like from a book. It's a person answering you, so he may also say, look, we use that when we talk too, but this when we say blah blah blah. So that's really nice, but I wouldn't use that as a beginner because it's too elementary. Like it's useless for you to ask, how do you say good morning in Italian when you can just find it on a book? So that's like on a different level, I would say. And also on the smartphone, so you can like just check it when you're outside, when you don't have time to focus on something. You can just scroll to the questions that other people did. If you add up, all of those together it won't harm okay also if you want just to have like a reference for words vocabulary from english to italian i use word reference and i like it like way more than google translator google translator is not bad when you have a text and you just want to grasp the meaning of that but for words um no word reference tells you for example one word that we use in many fields it explains you which one to use and sometimes there are also like examples so yeah i like that i would say use those use apps in general as something integrative to your studies like don't just rely on apps because it's just really confusing that's my opinion at least so what do you rely on books right like textbooks with rules good but in my experience, I've seen that Italian books for foreign, so all written in Italian, don't really help if there is no one teaching them. Like you need to have a teacher if you're using that book, okay? If you're doing that by yourself, just take a textbook in your own language or in English if you understand that or in any language that you want, but not all in Italian because otherwise you won't get the meaning of stuff, okay? Speaking of rules, though, <laughs> don't get them as gone, okay? Like, rules don't always apply. So, okay, study the rules because they can help you, but that's not what the language is based on. That's a tricky one. Like, 
people believe that the language is made on the rules. No, rules are based on the language. The language is made on the rules. No, rules are based on the language. Like when we learn as kids, no one tells us, okay, okay, when you go to school, they tell you, okay, this one goes like this, 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 this. At that point though, you know that already. And how did you learn? Not by rules. So don't get mad at your teacher or your textbook when they say that's an exception and you ask why and they say that's the way it is. It is the way it is. <laughs> also, when we learn as kids, we didn't learn particles by themselves. Like, okay, today as a two years old, I will remember all the articles. And they just speak like, lo, la. No, it doesn't work like that. Like you put everything together from the beginning. So don't get stuck on rules and on particles that you don't understand on elements that you don't get. Just take the phrase as it is, okay? Be open-minded. I know that's frustrating. I know, like, trust me, I know. But there's nothing you can do, okay? <laughs> take things as they are. For example, we say, vado a teatro, I go to the theater, vado al cinema, I go to the cinema. There's no way someone would ever say, vado a cinema, and you ask why? And maybe people can't even answer and we say, that's just the way we say it. Take it as it is. <laughs> then later, maybe, you will discover that back in the days, usually in a city, there was just one cinema and many theaters. So that's why we say vado al cinema, so that specific one and not al teatro. If you say vado al teatro, you need to add the name. But anyway, for the same reason, exceptions, get over it. Know that from the start, otherwise you will never, I mean, you will learn a language, but that will not be a pleasure trip. That being said, on rules, if you want to improve and you don't know how, read, 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 whatever you are interested in. For me, for example, when I learned English, I read a lot of books and comics, and that's why I told you already before, I'm not sure how you pronounce words, because when I learned that, I, I didn't read that in my mind like I should have. Under, okay, under is easy, but maybe as a kid, because I was like 12, 13, I would read in my mind under, because that's how you say it in Italian. But for Italian itself, it's easier, I would say, given that you know the Italian alphabet. Because for most part, it's read as it's written. The only tricky ones are the one with H, or CIA, but that's okay, we're talking about a different ability here. The best part about reading a book, I'm talking about learning-wise, is that you see how that word is used and that you have time to focus on that if you want. It's not going anywhere. A nice way, if you like cooking, for example, use Italian recipes. You learn to cook Italian dishes and you even learn new words. Then we have movies or TV shows. My opinion on those is that movies are hard to get. There are many, many expressions that you may never see on a book and that are just like spoken language, okay? No subtitles for the most part because if you watch something in Italian with English subtitles, in the middle of the movie, you will have forgotten already that it was in Italian even. Like you're just reading subtitles. If you're watching something in Italian with the goal of learning something, use Italian subtitles. Even for beginners, even if you don't understand the words, at least you see which is a word itself, which is the base to learn a language. Like to know that if I say ciao come stai, that's not a word altogether ciao come stai, but it's ciao come stai, really important in Italian, because we always tend to put everything together and we speak like really fast. So if you learn to distinguish words, <laughs> you're half the way through mastering Italian. Also movies sometimes are way too formal and way too specific. Like if you're watching thriller, body parts or police stuff. So yeah, useful, but not too much. I would say it depends on which level you are and which field you're interested in. Still, if you want to watch a movie, go with comedians. You get even the humor of the culture, like in this case Italian, which is not something to underestimate. Usually comedians are really like 
plateali, we would say in Italian. They interact with the public, they use a lot of gestures, so they're really loud. And also, my favorite ones, which are Aldo, Giovanni and Giacomo. One of them is from the south, so you can even see the differences, which is really funny in my opinion. What is better than movies are TV shows. I know what you're thinking, like where do I find all this stuff in Italian, right? Internet is a great place. So just go to the official website of Italian TV programs or channels and they have all the playlists there. You can watch past episodes or even in streaming they have it. The most famous ones here are Rai and if you go to the on-demand part there is there's a lot of stuff. Rai is more like educational I would say. Then we have Mediaset, which is more casual, maybe. They have the streaming part too. Also, what is really popular nowadays is real time. So you get more daily life shows or cooking like Bake Off. So yeah, Italian television, better than movies. Also, because if you think, back in the days, again, when Italy was made like a country, Italy itself, not many countries, but just one, there were so many different dialects that they couldn't speak with each other because at that time if someone from Milano went to Sicily it would be like another country totally and what really helped all the population to get to the same level of Italian was the television television has standard Italian so everyone learns from that so they know how to speak Italian. Nowadays, not anymore because there's school, of course. But in the past, it was really useful. So I don't see why you can't use that as well. Then last point are songs. I know a lot of people like to listen to Italian music and learn through that. Bene ma non benissimo, like good, but not great. <laughs> because singers don't really use Italian as it is. They change the ending of words or they don't respect grammar. So cool, okay, but not the best. Also nowadays, what's really in are like rappers or people that use a lot of slang and who talks really fast. So I don't know, I wouldn't really recommend it, but if you really want to, why don't you check out some old singers maybe that anyway, everyone in Italy knows about. Like, I don't know, Gianni Morandi, maybe. He also sang a song with Rovazzi, which is a popular rapper today. Claudio Baglioni, maybe, Lucio Battisti, all of those who, more than singing, I would say they were just talking with music on the background, in my opinion. What I mean is that they use normal Italian and that they speak slowly, all the words, maybe not in all the songs, but from what I remember, because we used to study that in school. So yeah, you see, that makes sense. Okay. That being said, and that point being touched, I would suggest not to focus just on one way. As I said already for apps, try to use all of them and even more, even things that I didn't say, because you can learn something different from every subject that we talked about. Try everything. It won't hurt. Like even when you feel you're not getting anything, it stays in the back of your mind and someday you will be like, oh wait, I heard that before. Also, don't get overwhelmed when you start with something new. For example, you take a song or a movie, blah, 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 and you don't get anything of what they say. Don't give up, don't get overwhelmed. Try, go till the end. At some point, you will get something, okay? And I'm telling this to you like I'm telling this to myself. I think I talked a lot. I hope I said something useful and thanks for watching.